the uh, third principle for me, uh, which again I think fits in with, with the, uh, the 12 steps, is what I refer to as true self-confidence. And this one's interesting because when I say true self-confidence, many times people will say, well, what's the true? You're either self-confident or you're not. What's the true? And I always tease people to say, I've run into people, maybe you have, who can act very self-confident, who have no self-confidence at all. You may have run into these people. This is the macho, do what I told you to do, I've never made a mistake crowd. I'm not talking about those people. I'm asking, do you have true self-confidence? And the way I personally think about it is this, I'm very well aware very well aware that there will always be people brighter than I am, more athletic, more articulate, more whatever, but, but I'm okay. I know what I know. I know what I don't know. I'm a learning, per I'm a work in process, right? I got the opportunity to get better over time. And then I think it's helpful to define what true self-confidence is not. You know, it's for me, it's not egotistical. It's not arrogant. It's not obnoxious. It's not complacent. It isn't, oh, I've arrived. No, I'm pretty good but I'm going to get a lot better. In fact, at, at Baxter, we used to describe it as, uh, I'm sort of a work in process, okay? I'm a work in process. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable in my own, in my own skin. Um, and I think if you take the time and realize how you decide whether you have true self-confidence, here, here's two questions you can kind of play around with that I think help you. Because people will say, well, how do, how do I know if I have true self-confidence? Here, here's, here's two questions I think you can ask yourself. First question is, whatever your role is, whatever you do, have you reached a point yet in your life where you're comfortable to say, I don't know? You know, hey, I don't know, uh, Kelsey, but you tell me how fast you need an answer. I, I, I know somebody who probably does know, but I don't happen to know. I'm not going to wing it. I'm not going to pretend I do, but, but I'll get an answer. But I just don't happen to know, okay? And if you think about it, there's a lot of people, it's like carrying an anvil around, right? They never, never want to admit that they don't know, okay? No, I don't know, but, you know, Dave, I'll find out pretty quick for you. The other question is, have you reached a point yet where you're comfortable to say, I was wrong? Forget what I said. What Harry said makes more sense. Let's do it. Are you willing to admit that you were wrong? And I often ask students, I'll say, well, why is, it, why is it that a lot of people don't want to admit they don't know? And why is it they don't want to admit that they were wrong? And I'm not sure, but I think it's because if uh, Hannah's my boss and I say, hey, you know, I don't know, What's she going to think of me? Is she going to think I'm, I'm not very good, right? Well, here's an interesting way to think about this. If you, re, if you believe that leadership is about the ability to influence people, and the way you influence people is you relate to people, it turns out that most people don't relate well to people who know everything. In fact, most people don't relate well to people who never make a mistake, right? But if I say, Dave, I don't know. You tell me how fast you need I'll get you an answer. I'm actually thinking Dave may say, hey, Harry's a regular guy. I can relate to Harry. Ah, if you can relate to me, I can influence you and I can lead you, right? So it's interesting to me. It works the opposite as to what most people fear.